Shalom, and welcome to Via Havta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Whenever the subject is the coming of Messiah, we need to make a distinction because that phrase, the coming of Messiah, can refer to the second coming or our blessed hope known as the rapture. So whenever someone speaks about the coming or the return of Messiah, we need to be very specific. Are we talking about the rapture, which happens before God's wrath begins? Or are we talking about the second coming, which takes place at the end of Daniel's 70th week, at the end of God's wrath being poured out? It will be Messiah during his second coming, which will complete the wrath of God. He brings that final outpouring of God's wrath, the conclusion of it. And it's God's judgment, that wrath, that is going to bring about a glorious change. And that change is the establishment of the kingdom of God. Now, when we look at this passage of Scripture, wrath is going to figure in significantly. So we're not talking about the rapture. The rapture happens before God's wrath, and it's for the purpose of delivering the new covenant people out of this world in order that they do not experience any of God's wrath. So the rapture is for believers, and it takes place prior to the wrath of God taking place. The second coming is for primarily two purposes to deliver Israel and to bring them to faith. And the second purpose is to destroy the enemies. And that's why there's that final pouring out of God's wrath. Well, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Isaiah and chapter 63. Now here, there's going to be a focus on Edom and that's important for a reason. The prophecy of Obadiah says, there's going to be a final battle. And this battle is going to be between the sons of Esau, that is the Edomites, and the sons of Jacob, Yaakov, or the Israelites, or the Israelis. And what we furthermore know is that the nations of the world, all the nations of the world, are going to side with Edom. And it's only going to be because of Messiah's return that he is going to deliver Israel. He is going to bring a remnant, one-third of Israel, to faith. They will be part of the kingdom people. And he is going to bring about the absolute destruction of those who have rejected the gospel. So this is what's going to happen in the last days. Now, we know that ultimately Messiah will come to the Mount of Olives. We're told that. In the book of Acts in chapter 1, when Messiah gathered his disciples and he ascended back into the heavens, the angel said, in that same way that he ascended into the clouds and returned to heaven, thus he will come back in the clouds from heaven in order to establish the kingdom, restore the kingdom to Israel. That's what we're told in the book of Acts. So he has to come eventually to the Mount of Olives. And according to order, we would see that this is the final place that Messiah would come to. But I would suggest to you, based upon the Bible, there's two other locations that Messiah will come to, pouring out his wrath prior to arriving at the Mount of Olives. The first place will be Armageddon. When I say first place, there's two additional ones. 
Mount of Olives is the final one, the third one, but there's two additional. And when I say the first one, I'm not necessarily speaking about order, but simply one of them. One of them is going to be at the Jezreel Valley. You might know this Jezreel Valley by another name. It's called prophetically Emek Yehoshaphat, which is the Valley of the Lord's Judgment. Now, probably you'll know it better by a third designation, and that is Armageddon. And we know that Messiah is going to destroy the armies of the enemy at this location, Armageddon, the Jezreel Valley. But based upon this scripture, we see that he also is going to pour out judgment at a place called Botsrah, or within Edom. Now, scholars will tell us that that Botsrah is the capital of Edom. That term, Botsrah, comes from a Hebrew word, Mipsar, which means a citadel, a stronghold, or a fortified place, specifically a fortified city. Fortified with walls, and not only with a wall, but also with many soldiers. So Messiah, in my opinion, if I had to put them in order, and we don't, but if we choose to, I would suggest to you, and this is just a suggestion, that the first place that he'll come is what we're going to be talking about in this study. Edom, to Botsrah, to another location called Mount Sair. This is the mountain of Esau where God is going to judge Edom. And then my opinion is after judging Edom, he'll go to Armageddon. Could the orders be reversed? They could. But we know for a fact those places, Armageddon and Edom, at the mountain of Sair or Botsra, that capital place, all of these are going to experience the wrath of God. Ultimately, after destroying the enemies at these two locations, Botsra and Armageddon, Messiah will ultimately come to the Mount of Olives and there, He will descend like he did in that triumphant entry. He will go through the eastern gates. He will eventually enter into the Holy of Holies where he will take his place upon what's known as the throne of God on the Ark of the Covenant, that mercy seat, what's called the Kippurit between the two cherubim where the very presence of God dwelt. Messiah is going to sit and rule over that millennial kingdom. And the events of the passage that we're going to study deals with this defeat of Edom. So with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to Isaiah chapter 63, the book of Isaiah and chapter 63. And let me just simply say, this passage is speaking about the coming of Messiah, the second coming, and one of the locations that he will visit. Verse 1, we read, Who is this? this one who comes from edom well there's no debate the one that it's speaking to is messiah it's speaking about him and he is going to come from edom and we're going to see what he has done there first one who is this coming from edom whose garments and it literally says soiled or stained are our garments from botsra and this is this location this capital city of edom so his garments are stained they are soiled and we're going to be told how in a moment it says this one whose glorious is his garments now we have a different word for garments here but nevertheless notice they are stained but we use a very important phrase here the word hadur which is being glorious, being of splendor. And they're soiled, they're stained, and we'll see with what, but it all speaks to this this outpouring of God's wrath. And that's what Messiah is going to do when he comes the second time at the end of Daniel's 70th week, at the end of those final seven years, he is going to pour out his father's wrath. 
all matters of judgment have been given to him so this one whose whose glorious or splendor is his garment and then it says he's traveling and how is he traveling this can be a word for marching almost like an army marches marching with abundant of his power so in the greatness of his power he is going forth marching and again this word has a military overtone to it that speaks about messiah as a one-man army coming and defeating all the armies of the world who have united against israel and with the antichrist messiah comes in that abundance of his power and he says i am speaking and notice his purpose righteousness now i would tell you that the word righteous is a kingdom word we know that for example from messiah's teaching on the sermon on the mount where he says seek first the kingdom and its righteousness so whenever we're speaking about the kingdom one of the best adjectives to use is righteousness so we read look at again this verse i am speaking in righteousness and abundant to save so what should be the objective for one who truly wants to be saved righteousness messiah is speaking about righteousness which is a kingdom word relates to the kingdom and this is what he's saving for he saves you so that you can be part of a righteous kingdom and begin to live righteously meaning according to those kingdom principles now in this world this is what a true believer is called to do look now to to verse 2. it says why red is your garment and your garments as one your garments as one who has trotted down in the wine press so we see here that he has a soiled garment and it appears that his garment is like one who has worked who has done the trotting down of grapes in the wine vat now obviously it's speaking about his garments being stained with what appears to be like wine but we're going to find out that it's truly the blood of the enemy verse 2 again why is red your garment and your garments as one who has treaded in the vat and then we have that same concept the vat the wine vat but a different word for it where he says i have trotted alone meaning the source of this this wrath is my own i and i alone have brought it about and remember the scripture says all matters of judgment have been given to the son he is the one who is responsible he paid the price for all sin and now he has earned this title the lord of lords and the king of kings in one sense he always was but he demonstrated the worthiness that belonged to him to be called that lord above all that king who is king of all so verse verse three the wine vet i have trotted alone and peoples and it's in the plural referring to the nations and peoples from them there is no one with me so when we look at the people and notice it's in the plural and it's referring to in this context those who are part from the people of god well we could say the other peoples and in regard to them there was no one that was with him now the reason why is this prior to this event prior to the wrath of god beginning messiah gathered up those from every tribe from every language from every people and every nation he's gathered them up those who were with him and now those who are left behind he found none that was with him among the peoples and he goes on to say i will will tread upon them in my anger and then he uses a different word for for stampling trampling or stampling someone i will will trample them in my wrath so we see clearly a reference to messiah 
coming back, pouring out the anger and the wrath of God upon the peoples, those who have no covenantal relationship with God the Father. Again, he says, verse verse 3, there was no one with me, and I tread upon them with my anger. And then he uses a different word, but the same meaning. I have tread upon them in my wrath, and sprinkle, he will sprinkle their blood upon, upon my garment. So notice, their blood is going to be sprinkled upon his garment. That's why, if we go back up to, to verse 1, This is why he's come from Edom, from the enemy. Always we see that Edom is God's eternal enemy up until the judgment. And we see that that soiled was his garments, and now we know why. They were soiled with the blood of, of these people that were scattered or sprinkled upon his garments. And all of my garments, he says, I have stained. And this word for stain means have become polluted, have become something that is rejectable. And this is because of the connection between his garments and Edom, a people that is forever rejected. This is what we're discerning from Isaiah concerning the second coming, verse, verse 4. For a day of vengeance is in my heart now this is hebrew but what's interesting is this when you look at that same word vengeance in the new testament it is related to bringing out of a situation that which is righteous that which is just and this is what god's doing his judgment destroys everything that is not righteous and just so this is why look again at verse verse 4 for a day of vengeance is in my heart it is the year of redemption which has come so we see a relationship between redemption and and this concept of of vengeance this this destroying of all things that are not right and not holy not according to the will of god so the year of of redemption and literally my redemption has has come verse five i will cast an eye i will look i will gaze upon and that's what he did he looked and he says there's no one that's helping i was amazed because there was no one that i could could trust that i could rely upon that i could depend upon all those people at that time were faithless and one of the things we see in the book of revelation when god is pouring out this judgment whether it's the trumpet judgments or the bold judgments they both relate to the wrath of god when god's pouring that out we see something no one's repenting no one is turning from their sin no one's confessing their sin they are committed to it and they're cursing and blaspheming god and that's why it says earlier there's no one with him now there is an exception and that's going to be that that remnant from the house of israel from those tribes of israel that are going to be brought to faith they are going to see the persecution and experience it upon themselves they're going to turn in faith to god and they're going to beseech their savior their deliverer messiah and then they're going to see who he is that one that came and was pierced nearly 2,000 years ago, and they are going to call upon his name, that is, they're going to come to faith. But this is not the subject of of this, this passage in Isaiah. It's the retribution that God's going to place upon the nations. Look at verse 5. Once more, I will gaze, I will look, and he says, there's no one that's, that's helping. I was amazed that there was no one to to trust and then what happened he says my arm was salvation for me now this term zeroi has to do with messiah it's the same word that speaks about a descendant or an offspring 
It's also referred in why it's called my arm is that it's the upper portion of the arm and it's a sacrificial portion. And therefore, it shouldn't surprise us that Messiah, in order to bring out a very significant purpose, redemption, that Messiah is going to sacrifice himself. He is going to be delivered over to death in order to pay that punishment of my sins and yours. He was without sin. So he's going to do that. He is going to bring about salvation where it says, my arm shall save, and it being of me, of, of my purpose to save. And wrath, it is what what supported me, meaning it is what this wrath is what brought appeasement to God. Why? Because God hates evil. He hates unrighteousness. This wrath destroyed those things. And what was left? It was now possible to create and to establish the kingdom of God. And that's what we see here in the scripture. And who does that? Messiah does that. And that's why he says, based upon my wrath, he says, it supported me, it upheld me, it I could lean upon. And who does the wrath of God? Messiah. Verse 6. I have trampled peoples in my anger, and I have caused them to be drunk in my wrath, that, that I brought them down to the earth, And what did he bring down to the earth? He says here, their blood. And we see a connection between blood and life. Now, make no mistake about it. This passage from Isaiah 63, these first six verses, speak about a portion of the Lord's second coming, where he's going to come and the purpose is, not the first time when he came, not for condemnation, but for salvation. When he comes the second time, it's the scripture tells us in the New Testament, it's apart from salvation, and the implication is it's for the wrath of God to destroy them, not save them, not deliver them, but destroy those who have rejected his covenant, who have not put their faith in his work. And that judgment, it's going to destroy those things that are in opposition to the kingdom purposes. And the outcome ultimately of God's judgment and wrath is indeed the establishment of his kingdom. A kingdom of righteousness, a kingdom of holiness, a kingdom of justice, a kingdom of perfection. And Messiah, in order to do this, he's got to first destroy those who are in opposition to him. And this is what it speaks of in Isaiah chapter 63. Well, we're going to conclude our study at this time and then next week we'll continue on in verse 7 when we complete this chapter isaiah chapter 63 until then may god bless you shalom from israel well we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org again to find out more about us please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.